you know, when I was doing work that I was in, you know, what a lot of people call your flow, you know, you, you're not even thinking about working. You're just, you know, every day is better than the last and you're, you're just in it. Right. And I was really aligned with those three when I was in my flow, that impact achievement development. And then the reverse is true. When I think back to the times that were the hardest, where I couldn't put a, a word to it, I couldn't put my, you know, my finger on it. Uh, but now in hindsight, it's like, that was the disconnect is those things weren't aligned. Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. If you've been listening to this podcast regularly, or if you know me well, you know I live a life and career aligned with my values and I help others to do the same. Last weekend, I was out with a good friend. My leadership coach self can't help but ask my friends how their jobs are going. Work is such a big part of life and there's so much change going on right now for everyone. After a long discussion, my friend called me a career therapist. It was the best compliment ever. No, I'm not a real therapist, but I can help you find career clarity to give you clarity on what matters most. And that's why I've built the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. In the six month program, I help you gain clarity on what matters most, create the action plan to get there, to reach career fulfillment, and lead as your authentic self. Here's what some of the program participants are saying. Because of this program, I've been more intentional about understanding my values and aligning my professional and personal life according to what I value most. I've also taken the time to deeply reflect on how I wanna show up as a leader. This program has shown me that it's okay to make decisions that are truly in my best interests. I know that if I'm 100% true to myself, I can lead in more powerful and impactful ways. Another participant said, participating in this program helped me gain the clarity I needed on what was most important to me in my career. The exercises, reflections, and conversations with supported women have helped me to make a career change that I would not have otherwise made. The structured framework coupled with a dynamic dialogue allows for personalized experience in a group setting. Best of both worlds. If you are a high achieving woman and want more fulfillment in your work, learn more at thecatchgroup.com. Apply to You Belong in the C-Suite Group Coaching Program now. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. I am so excited for you to hear this episode. I love having my clients on the podcast to celebrate their successes, to highlight their career paths, and most importantly, to highlight their learnings and their development journeys. And I'm so excited for you to meet Allison Woodard. Allison's career spans over 20 years, driving customer and employee experience through rising to the executive ranks in a Fortune 10 organization. As a hands-on, operationally focused strategist, she has propelled her teams to historic achievements. Allison's leadership style is tightly aligned with her guiding values of impact, achievement, and development. And while she has had direct responsibility for a $4 billion P&L and overseen teams of more than 3,500 employees, She is most proud of her time spent cultivating diverse teams through intentional and impactful development programs. Growing up in a big family, the youngest and only girl of five siblings, she definitely knows how to command a room. She attributes her childhood as foundational to her ability to foster relationships across all levels of the organization to drive the company's vision and strategy. 
Allison is also a current participant in the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. And I'm so excited for you to hear our conversation. We talked about her career journey and you get to hear her story and a career defining experience that changed the direction of her career. You'll get to hear how she's taken intentional steps to redefine her career for more impact. Allison has prioritized herself and her values, and I cannot wait to see who she will impact next. Let's get started. Well, I want to welcome you to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. How's it going? Thanks for joining. Things are awesome. Thanks for having me, Laura. This is like, I don't know. I feel like I just walked out on the stage or Saturday Night Live or something. <laughs> I love like it. Like you hear it, you hear the podcast, you listen to it, and then all of a sudden you've got your own mic. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, I um I don't think I ever told you, but when you first told me that you like listened to the podcast and then you told me, "Hey, I started listening to it to support you, but then I realized it's really good." And I'm like, yeah. listening. That was like one of the most like the greatest compliments because I love that you would support me and that's wonderful, but <laughs> I even even more so, I love that you get something out of it. So I'm really, I get a lot out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just really excited that, um, now that you can kind of be on the other side and other people can learn from you. Well, I appreciate that. Hopefully people have some nuggets from today. Yeah. I know I will every convo with you. I feel like I have nuggets. So good. Well, um, before we get into into the questions that I have for you, because you know I do have questions for you because I love the questions, I'd love for you to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. Absolutely. So my name is Allison Woodard, and I have had a 20-ish, 20 20-plus 20 year in corporate America, mostly working in a Fortune 10 organization. I would say jack of all trades, master of none. My career path has bounced all around different business units, different parts of the country, and sort of just climbed my way up the ladder that way. I am proud mom of two, I was about to say young boys. I don't know if they classify anymore. 10 and 8. So youngish boys. And uh, my husband, Ben, keeps us all sane. And we have a fluffy, friendly golden retriever named Carl, who just wants to lean against you all day, every day. He'd be a great like service dog in a hospital. Just lay on you all day. (laughs) Carl is the best. Carl is great. But I will tell you, Laura, like a little introspect over the last, I don't know, nine months, a year or so. And a lot of the work that we've done together. So not just shameless plug for you, but genuinely my answer has greatly changed on tell me a little bit about yourself. So the um, not to go too far down a rabbit hole, but the the way I just answered it is how I feel like I've just been conditioned to answer whether I'm at a backyard barbecue, or at a work function or doing something like this. I feel like so much of my identity has been wrapped up in my work. And now I'm just much more conscious of when I'm asked that question, I identify more of who I am. You know, I'm a mom, I'm a friend, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt. And oh, by the way, I was, you know, also grinding away in corporate America for two plus decades. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's been like kind of crazy. Like a year ago, I would have had a, you know, much different take on that question. Yeah. And and I also love that you've added like so many different things in the past year too. We can talk about that as well, but you've also added, you know, certified yoga instructor to that. Indeed. Namaste. Yes. (laughs) Which is, you know, just such a, a different part of you, but also like very in line, I would say too. (laughs) I like that. I take that as a big compliment because Again, a year ago, Allison, or five years ago, I, five years ago, I would have been rolling my eyes if somebody invited me to a yoga class. (laughs) Like, why don't we go really work out? 
And now I just have such a different appreciation for what you get out of that. So yeah, we can chat about that. But that was an interesting path last year. Really fun. So as part of our work together, we talk a ton about values, right? And so I want to know what are your values and, and what do those mean to you? I won't exhaust the list, but I think that the top three, let me just say really quick, the family value never goes away. So I'll, I'll put the family value as kind of the umbrella for me and everything goes underneath it. And when I say family, I mean blood and I mean the friends that are family. So just that ecosystem is kind of an umbrella. But the three that keep bubbling up, especially with the work that we've been doing in the cohort, are really around impact, achievement, and development. Those are the three that I keep coming back to when I think about, you know, when I was doing work that I was in, you know, what a lot of people call your flow, you know, you're not even thinking about working, you're just, you know, every day is better than the last. And you're, you're just in it. Right. And I was really aligned with those three when I was in my flow, that impact achievement development. And then the reverse is true. When I think back to the times that were the hardest, where I couldn't put a a word to it, I couldn't put my, you know, my finger on it. Uh, But now in hindsight, it's like, that was the disconnect is those things weren't aligned. And what did it feel like when it wasn't aligned, both sides kind of disconnected? How did how did it like feel in your body? So that part was actually was my wake up call mm-hmm. is I had multiple days and I, this isn't a badge of honor, but I have very few sick days in my career, right? I just, I'm a genuine, you know, generally I'm a healthy person, right? So I had multiple days within several months where I was waking up physically ill. I thought, you know, I maybe I I ate the wrong thing or, you know, this is like early uh, or not early, like mid COVID. I'm like, maybe this is a different COVID strain. I had no idea. I just knew it wasn't normal. And I was Lord willing, not pregnant. Right. So I just knew something, something was off. So I, you know, called in and took a a day and I called a mentor. I don't know, after like the third or fourth time that had happened. And I was saying to her, you know, Hey, girlfriend to girlfriend, like something is just off. And she's like, okay, explain it to me. And she had had a really stressful year the year before. And, um, I don't know if subconsciously that's why I reached out to her versus anyone, my doctor. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and she said, Allison, you're having panic attacks. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like for those, you know, 99% that are listening to this that don't know me, that was not in my wheel. Those words were not in my wheelhouse for me. You know, I think of myself as like, Glass is half full and everything sunshine and kittens and let's go. So to hear that my body was reacting to this, you know, environment, I, I, just, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. It was so foreign to me. And she said, you know, when we hang up, go back and look at your calendar and see if when this happened, what was going on that week, that day, that hour. And sure enough, I mean, she was spot on. I won't go into the details of what was on the calendar, but it was like a two by four to my forehead uh, wake up call. And even then I didn't realize this was a values disconnect, but, you know, that's ultimately, you know, I, I can appreciate now that's exactly what was happening. So even though mentally I didn't realize what was happening, my body did. <laughs> And my body just sort of started shutting down, right? To give me that wake up call of, you got to get off this train track. And what was it that made you decide to transition? And was there a straw that broke the camel's back? Or was it just a, a knowing that you knew that you need to, something needed to change? Yeah. So in the, in the minute... I thought it was, you know, kind of like one or two things. Like when I was in like the 
you know, middle eye of the, of the storm. And as I started to unwind it, I realized it wasn't one or two things. It was a culmination of things. And really, there were just a few things that were really the tipping point, right? Not one incident, not one, you know, project or person, nothing like that. But it was just a culmination of, I had just really taken my finger off the pulse of what at the time I couldn't have articulated or my values. I I wasn't doing that check-in. And I know you're, you're really big on that intentional formal check-in. And I would say with very good reason, you got to be intentional about it. It's kind of like, you know, nobody really wants to step on the scale, but maybe do it every now and then, you know, just to (laughs) see. All right. So yeah, that, that for me, it was like, it was a really big wake up call. So on the, the other end though, now that you have more clarity in values, I'd love to hear like, what does impact mean to you now, as you look back when you are in flow, like this idea of like, what does that mean? What does it, what does it feel like as you've kind of done that introspection? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the exciting thing about impact as a, a core value, and really, I think like my number one is it can show up in so many different ways and places, you know, what's the impact of coaching my second graders basketball team, right? What's the impact of volunteering in the community? What's the impact of, you know, work for for so much of my career, and what I really love, and I'm passionate about, I love frontline teams, I love big teams, especially when those teams are facing off with with customers. And that environment, you have such an impact in so many ways, right? You can go, you know, teach somebody to sell better, better sales skills. So they make more money. And now maybe they're buying their first home and they're breaking a cycle for their family, right? Maybe you go encourage somebody to take advantage of a tuition and reimbursement program. So they're the first people in their family to get their education or their degree. And that breaks a cycle for their family. And, you know, maybe you're just impacting somebody by opening their eyes of what they're capable of. You know, so I always kind of looked at it, you know, a little tongue in cheek that, Maybe I was just crazy selfish that I love these frontline teams because you can see every day what impact you can have there. And then it doesn't take much to swivel your chair and watch what impact they can have on customers. So, you know, you get that piece right back to, you know, another one of my core values is around development and you're developing, you know, these frontline teams and then they turn and apply that development, that skill set, that confidence into how they're caring for your customers, right? And then that, you know, kind of segues to another core value of achievement, right? And it's it's like it's everybody wins ecosystem. And so for me, impact shows up in a lot of different varieties. And it's really nice to have that clarity of how important it is for me, because then it also enables me to be really picky about what I say yes and no to. And I wouldn't have had that clarity a year ago. I love that. The say more about the, what you say yes and no to, um, small decisions, big decisions, what kinds of things? All of it. I've, you know, had different opportunities work-wise that would be really exciting. The, you know, very clear, scoreboard to go after. Um, I love clear metrics (laughs) and, you know, taking a big group of people, let's go run through a wall together. But I would have had to have had a second apartment or second residence, if you will, on another coast. And the grind that would have taken on the impact negative that would have had on my family the negative impact it would have had on me, I know physically, I'm the worst when I'm traveling about staying consistent with exercise. So just as a small example. So, 
you know, being able to look at it through the lens of saying, you know what, financially, this would be incredible for my family. The work would be fun and it's different than anything I've ever done. So I like all of that, but the, the negative impact would have outweighed. So that's a pretty big no. And then the, you know, the smaller no's are, we all get pulled in a hundred different directions. And I love any sort of like uh, break the cycle work, right? And a lot of times that shows up in nonprofit, you know, world. Uh, primarily it shows up there. And, you know, I just recently got asked to join a board and the the board wasn't really in that impact, break the cycle capacity. And so I said, no, um, that I was honored that they reached out and I would love to advise if they had a couple of things they wanted to send my way. Um, but I would rather dedicate time and mind space to something I'm truly passionate about where I could put my finger right on, on the impact. Yeah. I love hearing this kind of stuff so much because it's, it's like just tangible examples of how you're making values aligned decisions. And none of those decisions were, could have been like a hundred percent wrong. They wouldn't have been, you would have made them work and you would have figured it out, but would you have been fulfilled or would it have been the exact right opportunity? Probably not. And so you were able to kind of use your values as a filter for some of the ways that you spend your time, the role that you might take, all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I was actually talking to a um, longtime mentor this week about it and, you know, about like what is next and, you know, what what makes sense at this stage, et cetera. And I was really candid with her. I said, I really thought at this point, like something would have just fallen in my lap, right? Like, you know, and she, she said, no, she was like, you're, you're doing all of this work and this focus on values is what we were talking about. And she was like, so you've created a filter for what is next. And she's like, so the more work you do in this space, Every day you should wake up and go, oh my gosh, I am one day closer to perfect alignment. And I just love that lens of it because it's really easy to wake up and go, oh, right, this is hard. But instead it was the the confidence of waking up and going, the work you're doing right now really matters and it matters for the long game. You're thinking a little too short term. And you started that journey um, to get to this clarity Um, so you're kind of in the, you're kind of in the middle, the messy middle, you know, how, as we, as we say, um, but you were the one to decide to do this. So you opted in on this journey for yourself, which included lots of different decisions, including, you know, yoga and taking it and, and taking more time for family and joining this program that we're in together. Um, but what made you, what made you decide to join this cohort? What, what made you think like, this is the right time. This is the right thing. Yeah. So you mentioned that you kind of hit on this a little bit earlier when your book released last year and we were relatively new-ish back in town. So for a little background for our dear listener, um, Laura and I were in the same uh, indoor rowing studio together one million years ago. (laughs) And then my family moved around. We left Dallas. Now we're back. And so it's like, oh my gosh, what a perfect opportunity to reconnect with Laura and go support her and support the book. And so we go to the book launch and, you know, cheers to Laura. And I take the book home and I start reading the book and I'm like, oh, like <laughs> kind of like the podcast where I'm like, I'll be supportive. And it's like, oh my gosh, this has like some meat at it. And I really just felt like, especially at that point reading it, everything applied to me. It felt like the book was written, like I should have been in the, you know, to Allison on like the third page. (laughs) This is for you. (laughs) So any rate, going through that and then, you know, I know you and I connected a couple of times over the summer and we're just talking about, you know, the different moving parts and I am a part of multiple kind of women's cohorts 
and have been through throughout my career, um, some more impactful than others. And what really, you know, perked my ears on this was one, just the intentional focus on values and uh, let me think how to say this, not a peanut butter spread approach, right? Like my values are going to be different than the person next to me, than the person next to them. Right. And how focused this was on figuring out what that North Star was for me individually. But the magic of the cohort is one, it's small. Uh, so a lot of the cohorts I'm in are, you know, around eight to 10, 12 people, which is nice because, you know, life happens and people can't always be there. But when you've got a group about that size, it sort of gives people permission for life to happen, right? Because they know other people are going to show up, right? You're never going to be without someone in the group. And this smaller cohort was really impactful because, you know, if you, if you know, show, you know, that's a, that's a stool leg missing, right? Um, Yeah. We miss you. If you don't show like an extra accountability. Yeah. Yeah. There's extra accountability there. And the environment that you create for the group is right out of the gates. You do some, like you, we do some really good, like, you know, getting to know each other in the way that you introduce it, it's not so surfacey, right? Like we, you know, the, the boards and here's what's important to me and here's what drives me, et cetera. So you, you know, out of the gates, you learn somebody's name and like maybe the most <laughs> pivotal thing that ever happened in their lives, right? 30 seconds in, or you just learn that they got a new puppy, right? And everything in between, right? And so what that does is that vulnerability in the room also creates this um, almost responsibility to make each other better and to push each other. And I mean, I don't even think we were through our first session and we were pushing each other on, you know, whatever it was that day. And just that really healthy, I won't even say tension, it's not tension, that really healthy environment of everybody giving permission of, I know I met you yesterday, but I don't want to waste any time. And I know you're really smart and you've got things to va- you know, value to add here and I'm all ears. Right. So, and it's been, it's, it's totally played out like that. Like why I joined is what I'm getting out of it. It's been awesome. I love it. And, um, your cohort, is the first cohort that we've done some of the stuff in person. Yes. Which has been really fun. Um, We have a group that's Dallas based. I also have at the same time, a cohort that's virtual. You know, I think that was an, uh, that's been a, a fun surprise there too. I think similar things happen in all cohorts, but I think it's, it's nice to be able to be in person sometimes too. One of my favorite things is to get direct messages on LinkedIn from female executives. They reach out to me directly, maybe on a not so great day after back-to-back meetings or being triple booked after a day ruled by things not moving the needle. And they think, what are we even accomplishing here? I don't feel like I'm making an impact. They reach out to connect because they want a safe space to figure out what's next for their career. Because right now in their role, they know it doesn't feel right. Something is misaligned. They know it in their gut and they've made a pivotal decision. And that's why this is one of my favorite things because these leaders are ready to be intentional and strategic in their career. That feeling might sound similar to you. You might be watching others get promoted seeing other people ascend to positions that are well beyond their skill set, and you feel frustrated and maybe not valued. I want to tell you that you can step into larger, higher paying roles while having boundaries you never even thought were possible. How would it feel to walk into your work week, knowing that you have a list of challenging things ahead of you, that you have more control over your day? You know, you might be shocked how calm and centered and focused that you feel. 
the opportunities are coming your way and there's no part of you that's hesitating to consider them. I want you to get more strategic in your career, to figure out that next step, to land that promotion that you want, to feel like you are in charge of your week, to set the standard for how you work and how you show up. I know that you're ready. You're ready now. Join me and other high achieving women in the six month group coaching cohort. Apply now at thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. That's thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. Learn more and apply today for the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. So in terms of kind of any pivotal moments or any like, oh, I, I did not realize that this is what I was getting myself into or that this would be an outcome. I know we're, Allison's still like in her cohort. So we're still kind of in the journey, <laughs> but any surprises, insights that you'd, you'd share? Yeah. So I would say my first pass at looking at the, the values and what resonated the most with me, I feel like I was still looking at it through the lens of what has my label always been? What do I identify with? How would I introduce myself? How do I want, you know, Laura to walk out of the room thinking of me? And, you know, from that day, I actually, of course, I have all of my notes from all of our sessions. And at the end of every session, I recap at the bottom of my notes what my values are. So I have that like front and center. And from the first session to now, they've changed. And it's not that the inside of Allison didn't change. (laughs) It was just the doing this work to say, oh, like impact is your thing. And impact was on the list but it wasn't like my number one. And I don't know, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm rambling just a little bit on that, but that, you know, that journey really of the first blush of looking at the the values and here's what I think it should be. And now the confidence of, Oh, here's what I know it is. Yeah. Here's what I know they are. Yeah. And the, you know, the women in the group have, helped push that forward in you. Yeah. It's so interesting um, that that happens a lot. I think there's, I think there's a lot of layers to it. First, it's like, it's just self-awareness and under in self-discovery. Like, I think that this is what they are. And then, you know, or the meaning of it might change, or you might refine the meaning of it. um, Or you might prioritize values in a different way or, or often like just values completely change. And, and sometimes it's uh, participants have said, you know, I thought I had, I was supposed to have this as my value because this is what, you know, I learned was important growing up from my, you know, family of origin or from the school I went to or, um, whatever. Sometimes people like, you know, Hey, I need a value of family because if I don't like, I'm, I'm a horrible person. And then, (laughs) you know, well, that's just going to, that's always something that's going to be there. And so for this, I on purpose don't want to put that in there because I need to focus more on other things. Um, or just, Hey, this isn't as important as I thought. And I, Mm -hmm. this, this one is more important. So that, that confidence and clarity. Yeah. You're, you're saying it exactly right. And if I, I think part of it also is getting over what you're describing of, when you look at this list of suggested values, right? You can add anything you want. Um, but when you look at this list, nobody's going to look at it and go, oh yeah, that one doesn't belong on there for anybody, right? Like they're right. all valid. And, you know, it's a matter of saying, but these these are the most, you know, this is the biggest driving force for me. Um, and I think the family one's a really good example. You know, one of my friends that I met through yoga training we did a deal at the beginning of every classroom session, we would rotate around a different person would, would kick us off. And we were talking about family and friends that are family. Right. And I was talking to her later 
And basically I'll put, you know, my words to it, not hers, but she would have done what you said. She would have looked at this list and gone, you know what? Family isn't really what got me here. It was my friends and this, and my community. So community would have been hers and family would have been on the back burner. Yeah. But I do think like culturally, we all have this like, oh my God, you don't say family. What kind of psychopath are you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're a caretaker of parents or children or partner or whatever. And so I think we've, we, we've learned like all of these things that we should have. And some of this journey is like letting go of, of those and really finding what's important to you. And it seems like, oh, I'm just picking words, but the impact of some of this stuff is like, you're, you're saying yes or no to different op- job opportunities. Yes or no to being on a board. Like it's the, it's the use case to help make like all of these decisions. Um, and so getting those like, right, I think is, and not, r- not right or wrong, but like feeling confident about this is what it right. is for me right now just allows you to live in a, in a place of maybe more fulfillment and peace. So one last thing I'd love, uh, one of the things that I, I have loved seeing from you in the program is how you, you, it's a, it's a little bit of an extension of how you describe yourself, but how you describe your leadership. I have loved hearing like this even kind of change and like you've made this your own. And so do you, I'll just ask you the question. You want to describe your leadership to, to the, to the podcast listeners? Sure thing. So I think of it as I'm a hands-on operationally focused strategist. I take a lot of pride. I've propelled large teams to historic achievements. I am a card carrying extrovert I'm very energized by bringing people and ideas together um, that create ultimately a huge impact. So all of that combined with 20 plus years of corporate success has really enabled me to foster relationships at all levels of an organization and ultimately drive the company's vision and strategy forward. I love that so much because I can hear your values in that. And I guess I would ask like, is, and I, I know because I've, I, I knew the answer before, cause we started in one place and now it's at a different one, but like, is this what you would have said previously? No, it's not how I would have framed it. And it's funny because this is so foundational to me and it's not how I would have presented it. You know. and, but, but what I love about it is like, it, you're telling people who you are and how you lead. And it's so you, it's like card carrying extrovert, like, oh my goodness, that is so you. And I love, and you know that I love telling people that I'm an introvert because it, it yeah. gives you an understanding of like, oh, how might she work? Not stereo, not to be stereotypical, but just, Hey, this is who I am. This is how I think this is how it's going to come across, how I build relationships And it also, like, I think that description that you just mentioned, it tells you what's important and how you're going to make decisions. And that impact is so important to you. So I I love it. And I'm excited that uh, this has been one of the outcomes for you. Well, thank you. And I'm forever in your debt because the work has been awesome. You introduced me to fantastic colleagues that I feel like are going to kind of forever be part of the journey. So it's been really special. It's been well worth it. Well, I'm excited that, that you joined and we still have work that we're going to be doing over the next couple of months. And um, I'm excited to see you and the, and the, the rest of your cohort in our next group coaching session. So thank you so much, Allison, for being a part of the podcast. I really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that I was able to share this space with you today. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. 
To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care.